Okay, I'm here today with Dr. Susan Beidler, who is the department chair at Briarcliff University uh, Department of Nursing. Dr. Beidler, thank you so much for joining me today. We really appreciate your giving us a bit of your time to talk about your experiences with RealDX. I'm happy to be here. Wonderful, thank you. So if you could, would you start by telling us a little bit about your educational background and your journey into education and how you landed at Briarcliff University? Absolutely. Um, I started my career in a baccalaureate nursing program, uh, actually very similar to the university that I'm in at this point, a small liberal arts um, uh, institution. And from there, I um, decided I wanted to continue my education as a nurse practitioner. So early on, I attended the University of Pennsylvania and became a family nurse practitioner. So through my career, I have both uh, practiced and taught. I've taught at the undergraduate level, at the graduate level, in both um, master's and, and doctoral programs. I started teaching on the East Coast, um, teaching in the nurse practitioner program at the University of Pennsylvania, and then um, uh, took another position at the Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton. From there, I uh, went to the University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska, and um, uh, eventually ended back on the East Coast. Um, for as life unfolds, um, I returned to the Midwest uh, in the fall of 2014, and I've been at Briarcliff University uh, since then. Terrific. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your program at Briarcliff University? And I'd certainly love to hear from you also what's been your primary uh, practice and research focus as an educator. Absolutely. Um, well, at Briarcliff, we have um, all levels of nursing education. We have a traditional or pre-licensure baccalaureate program. We have the master's level programs for nurse practitioners and nurse educators, and we also have a DNP program. In addition, we have a degree completion program for RNs so that they can obtain their, their baccalaureate. Um, in terms of my, um, my practice and research, I've been, uh, as a family nurse practitioner, a primary care provider, most of my experience has been in nurse managed health centers working with uh, marginalized or vulnerable populations, um, which is also my research focus, which is developing models of care for uh, vulnerable populations. Um, and nurse managed health centers through history have been one of those models that have um, kind of um, created services to match the needs of the populations that they're serving. Is there an underlying philosophy or conceptual framework that you're operating under at Briarcliff? Um, the mission of our university is we are a, a Catholic Franciscan university, which is very much focused on service to others, uh, respect for others, and respect for the environment. So we that uh, mission is really... Um, part of our mission within the Department of Nursing. The university in our department is very focused on student and faculty service. So um, a lot of our, um, I guess, activities outside of the traditional educational activities are focused on doing things for the university, for the community, and more globally. You had mentioned there were a number of different tracks. Can you tell me a little bit about how those tracks are structured, how many students there are in each of those tracks, and is it all in person or is there an online component as well? That's a great question. We do, um, the only face-to-face uh, uh, -face or traditional setting is for our pre-licensure uh, baccalaureate program for nurses. Um, our other programs are all um, online. The um, Degree completion is, a, is, a, is our largest program. Those are the nurses who have, um, for the most part, completed 
their first two years in a, um, a community college and then return for their baccalaureate. Um, our graduate programs are all online. The NP programs are hybrid uh, because we do require students uh, have a kind of a, a residence, a time on campus where they're um, completing their physical assessment and diagnosis and their uh, skills courses. The doctoral program is an online program. Um, that program actually started as a BSN to DNP, and then we converted it to a post-master's DNP program. So all of those students are um, remote. And, and roughly how many students do you have in each track? Yeah. Our smallest program is really our undergraduate uh, BSN program. We have about 20 students in a cohort. Um, the largest program is the degree completion program. And then our graduate program, we have about uh, 40 to 50 students in that. It is a, uh, for the NPs, it is a three-year program. For the nurse educators, it's a two-year program. And then our doctoral program, we currently have six students in our first cohort. Uh, they will be completing their degree uh, the end of this year. And then in the first of our post-master's DNP, we have another six students. So you must be very excited to have your first doctoral students. We are extremely excited. This is a, a wonderful group of individuals who are very um, passionate about nursing and passionate about you know, being leaders in, in healthcare. Well, that's congratulations. Um, I'd love to now move on and talk a little bit about RealDX. How did you first learn about us? Um, you know, I was reflecting on this. It was actually uh, the summer of 2015. So I had been here just a year and the director of our graduate nursing program forwarded an email that he had received. So I don't know if it was just kind of a cold call or uh, if he had um, heard about this, this product, but he sent the information to me and I followed up. At that point, my main responsibility in addition to teaching was as the clinical coordinator for our NP and DNP programs. So I was always looking for opportunities to uh, increase um, or enhance the quality of, of, the, of that program. And from there, I was connected uh, with David Spiro and uh, we started our conversation, sharing information. Um, I started to explore within our uh, organization how we could uh, implement this, this uh, platform or this product. Was there a particular issue or challenge you were trying to solve that you felt the real patient videos could help you address? Yes, and I think for me, um, um, the issue of online clinical um, courses, I wanted to be sure that our students in the program uh, you know, a lot of what they learn is in their clinical rotations, and clinical rotations are, there's a lot of variability. So I wanted to be sure that uh, the students were having exposure to certain types of patients, and this is one way that we could do that with the surety that there's, um, you know, the quality is there. We are able to know that by the time they finish or complete their education, they have had the ability to um, kind of be exposed to certain types of patients and, and situations. Wow, that's great. Can you tell me a little bit about how your educators are using it, either in the classroom or um, in asynchronous types of settings? Right, and uh, we can use it in both, which is nice. We, we use it both at the undergraduate and the graduate level. Um, in the undergraduate, because that is a face-to-face -face, um, setting, the instructor is able to um, you know, play one of the uh, videos and use that to enhance a particular lecture. For the graduate programs, which are online, the faculty member is able to identify a case that helps to illustrate what they're basically presenting in the content for that particular week. And they are able to link it into our learning management system so that when the student 
goes to the course uh, to you know uh, read the content, uh, look at whatever else has been provided for them, um, they can access the video at that time. And so your students have access to Real DX outside of what they see in the lecture. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'd be interested in knowing how, what was your path to adoption or integration of Real DX into your curriculum? Was there a coordinated effort or were individual educators responsible for identifying content and deciding how they wanted to use it? Well, because we are, you know, early on, early, an early adopter here, we uh, basically um, presented in, in a uh, in-service type of a format this uh, opportunity to use real diagnosis and then uh, faculty individually select cases and embed them into their, their particular courses. Um, I think that is something that um, we want to continue to develop. Uh, we want to look at our curriculum as a whole and make sure that we're optimizing the use of real diagnosis and not over duplicating um, if someone's using it in one course, we don't want to um, necessarily re keep reusing that same particular case. So that's one of the, some of the functionality that we've added or um, enhanced this year is so that you can create courses and select cases to be <clears throat> added to a particular course and also control what the students can see in those particular cases. I wonder if you have any thoughts about how that um, adds value to the use of the platform in your program. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's one of the most exciting features, I think, is the fact that you can develop your courses within Real DX and um, kind of organize the cases that you're going to use that way rather than having to do that um, outside of the program. I'd, uh, thank you. I'd, I'd love to hear, you know, what kind of feedback you've had both from the educators and who are using it and also from the students. And has there been any in, anecdotal evidence uh, of change in outcomes? Well, I think from the educator perspective, of course, they love that. Any, any way that you can engage the student in their learning, um, apart from here's some information, go read it. Uh, we all know that particularly the upcoming generations are very visual. They want to, um, uh, and they have short attention spans. So they can look at a video and they get the point without having to read a description of what basically that case is about. From the student perspective, we don't have a formal mechanism at this point to be able to assess um, the impact of the Real GX on the student um, learning uh, in our course evaluations, of course, anecdotally, they love the, the uh, videos. They're um, short, they're uh, usually dynamically presented, uh, and then the additional learning content that's provided is just really excellent. So that piece is, um, you know, between the student and the learner, um, you know, uh, everybody's very excited about this product. Terrific. And, you know, I'd love to get your, your thoughts or your input. You know, th my hope is that this uh, interview is going to be watched by other educators who are considering RealDX for their program. What do you think they should know about, about RealDX itself, about your experiences in utilizing it in your curriculum, or, or any other uh, helpful tips you might have around making it successful? Sure, I mean, what I've found in my, in my experience working uh, with Real DX is the, um, the, the support that's been provided uh, by both you, Julia, and David early on. Very flexible, very interested in making sure that if we have a particular need, a particular case that we're interested in, uh, you know, you're at the stage of, of development where you would be um, open to trying to develop that case, uh, which leads me, we actually have a doctorate in physical therapy program here, who is also 
um, using uh, Real DX and uh, at some point is looking at creating some uh, specific cases for their program. So I think that the, the, the flexibility, um, the support uh, from the very beginning, uh, I never feel like uh, I have to um, jump through or, you know, I need to have a problem, I reach out, I get an answer. I like that. Um, that's very important to me. Uh, as we use anything that any new technology. Um, it's very easy to embed. Um, we have uh, students in our situation, our students receive a uh, unique user uh, access so they can access it, um, you know, individually for the online user. And that's very nice to have. Um, yeah, so we've just, we've been very pleased with our experience. Do you have any advice for folks who are considering using it? You know, maybe some things you've learned along the way um, around decision making and selecting cases, or or how to help you know future future programs maybe avoid some um, some obstacles that you had to overcome. Sure, I think I think in the best the best case scenario is when adopting is really uh, mapping the cases to your curriculum. Um, you know, the curriculums are established, you know what content is being delivered in which course, and then basically building the uh, Real DX uh, cases to fit with your courses. And with this new feature within the platform, it's very easy to do that. Um, so we're doing that now after the fact because that feature wasn't available early on, but it is something that we'll be working on as we move forward. Well, Susan, I really can't thank you enough for giving us your time today, sharing your thoughts and insights about RealDX. Also want to tell you how much we appreciate, you know, you were, as you mentioned, you were a very early adopter of the RealDX technology. Your program has been very innovative in, in your uses, and I'm looking forward to continuing to work with you and your colleagues on other possible use cases and to benefit from your experience so that we might share it with other educators in the, the nursing space. So just again, thank you for taking the time today to share. You are very welcome.